Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osterberg at 501, and today I want to go over my Stabomancer and Berserker Frost Focused Gun Build. So this build is going to be focused on stacking up as much frost damage as possible while dealing most of that damage with our guns. So the action skill ability we're going to be using is from the shadows. So we enter stealth and all of our damage dealt is now going to be guaranteed critical hits, but our critical damage is reduced by 25%. This lasts for eight seconds, has a 36 second cooldown. This guaranteed crit is going to synergize with a lot of our build and specifically with the main weapon and we're using is just a pretty nasty combo. So the class feed for our Stabomancer is Dirty Fighting. We have an increased critical hit chance of I think 25% at a baseline. I have additional Stabomancer power so it's up to 30% for me right now and this isn't a flat 30%. This is 30% of our total so it's not as much as you would think but this is still a pretty nice critical hit chance increase. Then for our Berserker we have Rage of the Ancients. On action skill start the Fate Maker becomes Enraged. While enraged, they deal bonus frost damage and are enraged, won't deplete when an action skill is active. And the bonus frost damage is 10% at a baseline, enrage is 15 seconds, and with from the shadows, our enrage will be up 100% of the time and won't lose duration. So this is just adding additional bonus frost damage in our big burst windows. So the main tree we're going into is the berserker tree. So first we're going 5 out of 5 into ancestral frost, 20% frost damage. Then we're going 3 into unyielding. You regen a percent of your missing health over time. So it's 1.5% of your missing health every second. While enraged, this is doubled. So the lower health we are, the more health we're regening per second. The higher health we are, the less we're regening. This is a lot of sustainability and we're pretty heavily focused on having a lot of health. So then we're going three into Icebreaker. You gain increased damage to enemies that are slowed and the closer an enemy is to being frozen, the more damage it is increased. And we're doing all frost damage. So this is just going to keep increasing damage until the target's frozen. Usually by that point, a lot of targets are going to end up being dead. Then we have five into the old ways. The fan maker deals bonus damage and gains increased damage reduction the closer they are to an enemy. So 30% damage and 30% damage reduction when very close to an enemy. Then we have three into cold snap. Movement speed is increased and frost efficiency is increased. This is doubled while enraged. So we're going to be freezing stuff a lot quicker and we have more movement speed and movement speed will be increasing our damage from one of the other passives we'll get into. Then we have unarmored defense. A portion of our ward is reserved and cannot be restored but our maximum health is increased so we reserve 50% of our ward but we get 150% of that reserved reward as health so we have a pretty massive health bar and this will synergize very well with unyielding so we're just regening a percentage of a big health bar all of the time then we have five points in the iron squall only for the fire rate increase so 15% fire rate increase when enraged this is doubled to 30% so a pretty massive Massive fire rate increase. Then for our capstone, we have Blood of the Fallen. It's a kill skill. The Fate Maker's remaining action skill cooldown is reduced by a percentage. If their action skill is currently active, they restore a percentage of its duration instead. And that's 20% on each. So if we're mobbing enemies and our action skill was already used and is on cooldown, we keep getting that cooldown back quicker and quicker. If we're in from the shadows and we kill enemies, we stay in from the shadows longer. Then for our Stabomancer tree, we have five in an arsenal, mainly for the 15% gun damage increase. Then we have three into haste, and this is mainly for the movement speed increase. And then when we cast a spell, these effects are doubled, and it's 12% move speed, and then double that when we cast a spell for 12 seconds. Then we have five into swift death, and this is why we want a lot of movement speed. While moving, the Fate Maker gains increased damage dealt. At baseline, this is 10% at default walk speed, so we're going to have a bunch of movement speed buffs, which is just going to give us pretty big damage increases. Then we have two points into exploit the weakness whenever we apply a stats effect that affected enemy takes increased damage from all sources we only put two into this just to get lower down on the tree mainly so it's four percent damage increase per unique stats effect applied on that target then we have two into sneak attack which just gives us critical damage increase we can't go more into this because we don't have points but then we have elusive the fate maker can now shoot and sprint at the same time and we have a chance to just evade damage when moving and this is a 10 percent chance at default walk speed so we get a higher and higher chance to evade damage the faster we're moving so we're also being more defensive while moving faster then for our hero stats we max out both dexterity and strength for critical chance increase and critical damage increase then the rest of my points i put into attunement
Ruin for a skill cooldown because we want to be in From the Shadows as much as possible. And this does help when we don't have a lot of other enemies to kill to keep getting into From the Shadows as quickly. For Myth Ranks, you just put in any points you think is going to work well with the build. For Archmage, you have Frost Damage you can first start to go into. This is going to be the main thing for Archmage that increases our damage for this specific build. For Blade Master, I'd recommend going in Strength and Constitution 10 out of 10. Then it's mainly just melee attack, so nothing else is really going to affect this build. Then for Deadeye, I'd recommend putting 10 points into Dexterity. Then you can put points into whatever you want. Everything here is going to be good. I'm maxing out Fire Rate right now, but you can do Magazine Size, Reload Speed can even help, Move Speed can help, and then the Infinite Stacking effect at the end is Gun Damage, which is also going to help quite a bit. Then for Druid, you can put points into Wisdom. I max out Loot Luck first instead. This gives you a pretty big chunk of increased Loot Luck to get better drops. A lot of this other stuff isn't really going to affect it. You can do Attunement, then Wisdom just to cap these out, but most of the other stuff isn't really going to affect this build that much. Now for our gear, and the main weapon we're going to be using is the Liquid Cooling. I know a lot of builds are currently using this. This is one of the best weapons in the game, possibly the best gun in the game. It's a Frost weapon, so it just perfectly works with this build. Now essentially how this weapon works is it's a overheating weapon, but crits reduce the overheating, so crits cool down the weapon. So mixing this with From the Shadows for guaranteed crits, if you're actually hitting a target with your bullets when in From the Shadows, this weapon pretty much won't overheat whatsoever. And you can get times two on this weapon. This is a ridiculously rolled version of this weapon. We have a volatile one, 824 times two. So the main thing you want to look for with this weapon is to get a times two. That's going to be the main thing that's going to give you a massive damage increase. Other weapons that are good are these Hyperius Epic SMGs that have times four pellets. The ones with times four always come in frost, and these do quite a bit of damage as well. These are the weapons that shoot faster the higher the magazine size. So once it gets lower and lower, the fire speed keeps going down. So pretty good weapon. Not as good as the liquid cooling, but still pretty good. Then you also have Queen's Call that I've gone over in other videos. I don't have it on me right now, but that's a weapon that shoots times three pellets at a baseline, and you can get times two on it to shoot six shots at a time. And every crit has a chance to also call down a frost meteor. That's a very good weapon as well. Now, this is one of my newer characters, so I have a long way to go to get much better items for this build. I do have a few decent items. But first off, the spell we're using, I'm just using a Frost Buffmeister. This spell just buffs the base damage of pretty much everything. So this is just some more additional Frost damage, and this will just absolutely help with everything. And we're already focused on completely buffing up our gun damage, so this just helps synergize pretty well into that. For our necklace, I pretty much just have a stat necklace with gun damage and a Berserker power on it. I really need a better necklace to get additional effects on them, because that's pretty much all my necklace is doing right now. So there's a big upgrade I need with a necklace. For my shield, I mainly just want something that has a pretty high shield capacity, so that could also convert even more shield into health. For my armor piece, I definitely need a better roll of this. I have an epic one, mainly gun damage and movement speed increases on it. Does have Stabomancer power and Berserker power, and the increases are mainly to movement speed effects, so more movement speed, more damage. Now what I would say would be better than this is getting something with like gun damage, gun crit, and maybe movement speed, but having Berserker power be the main increase because that will increase our frost damage from our enrage, and then pretty much any skill increase that gives more damage. Then for our rings, for our rings as well, I don't have that well rolled rings. I have gun damage on both, which is nice, and I have action skill cooldown rate on both, which does help, especially for chaos chambers and if you're on longer boss fights where you may not be able to get back in from the shadows from killing enemies as quickly, that will definitely help, but I definitely need better rings as well with better stats. So most of my pieces down here, I can get pretty decent upgrades for. Now for our enchants, you just want to stack as many enchants that are going to increase your damage for damage or gun damage. On my weapon, we have on action go start, increases damage up by 20% for 20 seconds, so there's a good damage increase. Then we have on spell cast, increases frost damage by 30% for 5 seconds, a big buff but not as long as the duration. On our shield, we have while action skill is active, increases frost damage by 50%. Now any of the enchanteds that are while action skill is active are currently bugged in our 60 second durations baseline, so when you use an action skill, it's just a 60 second duration 
action even if your action skill isn't currently active after this is used so they're quite a bit stronger than they actually say they are then on our buff meister we have on action skill start increase gun damage by 40 percent just as many buffs to your frost damage gun damage or overall damage always going to be good make sure you don't stack two of the same enchants because that doesn't work so that's pretty much the entirety of the build and this build is actually really fun to use especially when you're running around in chaos chambers essentially the main things you're trying to do is keeping up your from the shadows action ability as much as possible that's going to be your biggest damage increases keeping up your buff meister as much as possible as as well this gives us good damage increases and then just zooming around the map and getting as close to enemies as you can while continuously moving so you'll see in boss fights i'm trying to essentially just circle around the bosses as quickly as i possibly can because being closer to an enemy is going to give us more damage and moving faster and faster is also going to give us more damage so maximizing this build actually requires a decent bit of skill especially with how fast you get to move in this build it definitely becomes harder and harder to stay on target as well also i didn't mention this but the buff meister gives you a big speed boost when it's active as well as giving you that damage increase so that just kind of double dips on giving us damage increases because we're getting base damage increases and then movement speed is also giving us damage increases because of our passives but that's pretty much all i want to go over with this build so subscribe if you want to see more wonderlands or other videos leave a like if you liked the video leave a comment down below what you guys think about this build and thanks for watching.